Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and for the next 25 minutes, Rabbi Schneider explains what your dreams are telling you. Dreams are personal and unique to each and every one of us. Think about it. There are some universal themes, but for the most part, each dream is as different as a patterned snowflake. That's why Rabbi Schneider wants to give us some practical tips and insights to navigate these night visions. And if you've missed any of the messages in this series so far, feel free to catch up online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. But let's get started with today's message on prophecy, dreams, and visions. Here is Rabbi Schneider. I know in my life, many of the critical decisions that I have made, I've been able to make with confidence because the Lord showed me what to do in advance through a dream at night. I want to move forward today and say that sometimes the Lord will give us a dream about our future so that when the future arrives, when the future becomes now, we'll know what to do. I think, for example, many years ago, right before I got married, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was in the attic of a home. And it was a very simple attic. It was dark up there. And myself and some other people were standing against the back wall of this attic. Suddenly, from this window, streamed into the attic a spirit of life, and it was all the colors of a rainbow. And as soon as I saw this, again, I was against the back wall along with some other people. As soon as I saw this beautiful spirit of life flowing like a river come into that attic, I immediately moved away from the back wall, approached this beautiful spirit of life, followed the spirit out to where it had come into the room from, stuck my head out the window from which he had flowed into the room from. And when I looked out the window, beloved, Everywhere was color. It was an eternity of color. I opened my arms up in the dream. I said, come and live inside me. And then immediately I heard the word eternity in my soul, deep, deep, deep down in me. Instantly then the dream shifted. I found myself looking out the other window, the window that was on the other side of the room. It was just chaos, all kinds of stuff just floating across the window. I won't go into the interpretation of that at this time. Then bam, the dream shifted again. In the third and final phase of the dream, I was walking down a street just at peace. And as I was walking down the street, I came up to a car wreck. And as I approached the car that had been in the wreck, there was an African man and the back door on the passenger side had flung open, which is where he was sitting. And his body was half laying out of the car and half of him was still in the car. He was still whole, but the door was flung open and half of him, his upper torso was on the street and his waist down was actually still inside the car. And when I came up to this African man, I looked at him and he was badly burned. And without thinking, without ego, without trying to do anything, I very simply and authentically just stuck my hand out towards him. And then those colors that I had asked to come and live inside me in the first phase of the dream, those colors came out of my fingertips, came onto the African man's body and healed him of his burns. And then the dream was over. Now that happened over 35 years ago. But when it happened, I knew that it was a dream from God, and I knew that God had called me into a healing ministry to the African. At first, because I had never been to Africa, I thought it just pertained to African Americans. But then what happened was, I got a call from somebody in Haiti asking me to come down and minister in Haiti. I preached the gospel in Haiti and literally saw thousands of people running forward to receive Jesus as their Messiah. And the Haitians are made up mostly of Africans that had been taken there to be slaves. And so the Haiti population has African roots. And from there, I just saw God begin to open the doors, opening up places for me to travel into Africa. We've been to many, many countries there. As many of you know, I can't even count them all. But the Lord showed me over 35 years ago in a dream that when these opportunities presented themselves in Africa, I should go through those doors because he had 
given me a healing ministry to the African. God will sometimes show you your future in advance in a dream. So when your future arrives, you'll be ready and you'll go through that door. And some of you right now perhaps can relate to this. You'll think about something the Lord showed you about your destiny way before your destiny came. And the reason he showed it to you was so that when your destiny did come, you would be able to go through that door with confidence. Beloved, the point that I'm making in this series is that God speaks to his people in dreams. We need to be listening. We need to be paying attention and we need to take the appropriate action. It's one of the most common ways scripturally we see God speaking to his people from the beginning of the Bible, from the Torah, all the way through the Brich Hadashah, the New Testament scriptures. Sometimes we can receive comfort from Hashem which is just a Hebrew way to say God. We can receive comfort from God through our dreams in a way that far surpasses the comfort that any human being could ever give us, especially when we're going through hard times in our life. I'm going to the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis. I'm reading chapter 28, verse 10 through 16. Now, in this portion of Scripture, Jacob was fleeing for his life. Remember what had happened? He had tricked his father into giving him the blessing. Remember Jacob dressed up in Esau's clothes and he stole the birthright. And when Esau found out what had happened, he was going to kill Jacob. So Jacob had a flea. Now, when Jacob had a flea, I want you to imagine, it wasn't like today where you can move from Atlanta to Los Angeles and it's no big deal. You make friends right away. You go to different places where you can find people and develop relationships. And it's easy to go from one city to another city and basically to reacclimate. Compare being able to do that today and how often it's done versus what that would have been like in the ancient biblical world where your whole family was in one location. Your whole life you had been in that location. All your relatives were in the same location. In fact, it was the only place that you ever knew. And now you have to leave that place, that geographical area that you were born, that you were raised. Everything was familiar to you there. All your relatives were there. You have to leave that place to go someplace that's completely unfamiliar, where you have no contacts, you have no relatives or friends. That's what was the case with Jacob. He's fleeing for his life because Esau is going to kill him. He's in the middle of nowhere, doesn't know where he's going to end up, has no comforters around him. He's in fear and he's totally lonely. And in that state, he goes to sleep one night. I'm going to pick up now once again in Genesis 28, verse 10 through 16. Then Jacob, then Yaakov departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. He had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac, and the land of which you lie. And I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Now, I want you to think about that. Jacob woke up as a result of the dream. What did he say? He said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. How did Jacob find out that God was with him 
and was with him in his circumstances in the now. He found out, beloved one, through the dream that God just gave him. When he laid his head on that rock and he saw a ladder ascending from heaven to earth with angels ascending from earth to heaven and heaven to earth right where his head lay, he realized that God was with him, that God was right with him, right where he was, and it took away his fear. He discovered God's presence with him He discovered that God's favor was on him through a dream he received in the night. And he's doing the same thing today in the now for you and I and all his children. This is why Peter quoted Joel chapter 2 when the Spirit of God was poured out in Acts chapter 2. And he said, what you're seeing is that the Lord's Spirit has been poured out as was prophesied by Joel. And the result of that is God is going to speak to you in your dreams at night. We can receive assurance and comfort and affirmation about our lives and about our relationship with God by paying attention to our dreams. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and Rabbi will be right back in a moment. It's our prayer that today's message has been a blessing to you so far, and we hope that it enriches your walk with Yeshua. If you have a prayer request, we invite you to submit it online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Our team lifts up every individual request before the Lord, and it would be our pleasure, privilege, and honor to pray for you and your family. At Discovering the Jewish Jesus, we are looking for like-minded people who are ready to partner with us. If you're sensing the Lord leading you to offer a financial gift of support, would you please contact us today? Become a monthly partner. Go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or to give a gift of any amount today, just call 800-777-7835. And now here's Rabbi Schneider with the rest of today's message. Now, I shared with you earlier that not all dreams are from God. Let me give you an example of this happening in my own life regarding this particular subject of how the Lord can assure us and comfort us and affirm us by speaking to us in our dreams at night. I remember years ago, I was in a season of deep pain. And then I had a dream one night. And in the dream, I literally heard an angel speak to me. And you say, well, how do you know it was an angel that spoke to you? All I can tell you is when you encounter the Lord or when you encounter an angel, there's no question as to what's going on. The Bible says that in the day of God's power, man is made willing. You just know. When Isaiah encountered the Lord in Isaiah chapter six, he didn't wonder whether it was God he was encountering. It was so powerful, he knew it. And so I can say was the case in this experience. I had a dream and in the midst of the dream, I literally heard the voice of an angel and I knew it was an angel rather than the Holy Spirit. And the angel said to me, remember I was going through a time of deep pain. The angel said to me, you're on the right path. It brought assurance to me. Even though I was going through a deep time of hurt and confusion, that night I knew that I was walking in God's love, that his favor was on me, and that I was on the right path. Let me give you another spectacular example of the Lord speaking to me in a dream at night to bring assurance. And I'm sharing this with you, not to boast about my own experiences, but to help you understand how real this is, that it's not just for the people that lived in the time of the Bible, it's for you and I today. Some years back, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was with my best friend from high school. And he and I were walking to a big baseball tryout. I mean, it was a very high level baseball team that he was trying out for. And I realized that it must have been him that was trying out for the baseball team because my friend was a tremendous athlete. And I just felt in the dream that I was just with him because he was the great athlete, not me. So we're walking to this baseball tryout and we get to the coach who's doing the tryouts and all of a sudden the coach looks at me and I'm thinking, well, why is he looking at me? My friend's the athlete. I was kind of a one dimensional athlete. I could wrestle. That was it. My friend was an all around athlete. He was a great baseball player, basketball player, football player. He was really the legitimate full fledged athlete. 
But all of a sudden we get in front of this baseball coach who's giving people tryouts and the coach looks at me and he said to me, everything that's happened in your life up to this point is under the bridge. But I'm gonna be watching you from this point forward to determine whether I'm gonna put you, speaking to me, in the major leagues. And then the dream was over. I keep a dream journal and I write down the dreams that I have that I think are from God. And so I wrote down this dream, I prayed about it, I didn't know what it meant, but I recorded it. About a year later, I was going through my dream journal on New Year's. I always go through my dream journal around the first of the year to see how God had spoken to me the previous year. And as I'm going through the dream journal, all of a sudden I see that dream. I'd forgotten about it. And remember, the dream was the coach saying to me, I'm gonna be watching you from this point forward to determine whether I'm gonna put you in the majors. So when I read that, immediately I felt defeated because I know all the selfish thoughts that I have, the times I can become frustrated, the times that I'm self-absorbed or self-centered, thoughts of accusation that I have. So when I saw that the coach was gonna be watching me and I, and I knew that the coach was a symbol of the Lord, and when I read that he was gonna be watching me to determine whether he was gonna put me in the majors as I reviewed my dream journal, I didn't think I had a chance in the world. I felt totally defeated. I said, there's no way I made it. There's no way he's promoting me to the majors. I didn't even have a prayer. But in desperation, I have to admit, sometimes I'll do this, I'll say, Lord, I don't recommend this. And God certainly doesn't have to speak this way. I'm just being authentic with you. Sometimes in desperation, I'll say, Lord, if you're saying this, then let my finger land on an X. And if you're saying this, let my finger land on a Q. So it's certainly not a foolproof method, but occasionally God condescends to speak to us and to meet us in our own humanity. So I say, Lord, if I made it to the majors, let my finger land on an X. And if I didn't make it to the majors, let my finger land on a Q. Again, I just randomly open my Bible. So all of a sudden, I'm ready to open my eyes and see that my finger landed on the Q that I didn't make it. And all of a sudden I look where my finger landed. It didn't land on an X. It didn't land on a Q. Beloved, it landed on the word major. I said, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize the word major was in the Bible. Only one time out of approximately 750,000 words in the entire Bible is the word major used. One time out of 750,000 times. How did that whole incident come about? It came about when the Lord spoke to me in a dream that he was gonna be watching me to determine whether he was gonna put me in the majors. Then he confirmed it to me almost a year later that he did and I was blown away because I don't feel like I deserve it or that I made it or that I'm, you know, God is so much more tender to you and I than we realize. He's so much softer than we understand. David said of the Lord, your gentleness has made me great. Beloved, God set that all up from a dream. God encourages us and affirms us just like he did Jacob through our dreams at night. The question is, beloved, are you and I paying attention? Will we hear? Will we take notice? Will we write our dreams down so we don't forget about them? And will we review them so we can get the full benefit from them. I'm going to be praying for you that Father God would open your ears and help you better hear him in your dreams at night. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and a message by Rabbi Schneider titled, What Your Dreams Are Telling You. Today's message is just one part of our study on prophecy, dreams, and visions. And you know, talking about dreams and visions can be confusing sometimes because they're so personal. But as Rabbi mentioned, dreams and visions are ways that God communicates with all of us. And while prophecy, dreams, and visions don't always work out according to our time, 
timelines, they do work according to the Lord's. Scripture tells us he divided day from night to be a sign for the seasons. And that's why we'd love for you to learn more about doing life on God's timetables. You can even learn more about the Jewish history and the heritage of our faith when you visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. We have a ton of great messianic content and it's bound to get you excited about the seasons of God and these other important topics. And right now, let's turn our attention back to Rabbi Schneider once again. When you send in your tithe to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, your church, or wherever you're sending it to, you're not just sending your tithe to that ministry. What you're actually doing, beloved, is sending your tithe unto the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 8, that when we present our tithe to the Lord, we're presenting it to the one, beloved, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who lives. I want you to know, beloved, take joy when you send in your tithes and offerings, because what you're actually doing is sending your offering, lifting up your tithe and giving it to Jesus himself. I want you to know I love you today. I want to ask you to be faithful with your finances to the Lord. And if this ministry is blessing you, I want to ask you to do it through this ministry. God bless you. To give a financial gift today, simply go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or call us at 800-777-7835. You can also partner with us by donating through the Rabbi Schneider app. Just click on the donate button in the middle of the home screen and then follow the simple instructions on the screen. We're truly so grateful for every single gift that we receive, and it's because of your generous and your faithful giving that we are reaching people all over the world. Discovering the Jewish Jesus is broadcasting in almost every country, and thousands of people are being discipled every year. So thank you, thank you very much. And as our way of saying thank you for your financial gift, we'll send you our current newsletter, and it's filled with updates dates, special announcements, exclusive offers, and it's sent directly to your home along with Rabbi's message of the month. And don't forget that coming up next Thursday, May the 4th, live at noon Eastern time, Rabbi will be live on YouTube for the National Day of Prayer. Make sure you join us. Head over to our YouTube channel, May the 4th at noon Eastern time. And don't forget to invite your friends and family to watch and pray with us as well. Thank you for sharing this half hour. Now here is Rabbi Schneider with a special blessing as we close out our study today. What I love about the ironic blessing is that it did not originate with man. The words actually proceeded from the very essence of God himself. The blessing comes from the book of Numbers chapter 6. So listen to these words and receive the blessing of the Lord into your life today. Yahweh Vayishmarecha Yair Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. If you'd like more information about Discovering the Jewish Jesus, visit our website at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You'll find our broadcast schedule, podcast links, teaching notes, and so much more. And while you're there, let our prayer team pray for you. Matthew 18, 19 says, If two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Our prayer team lifts up each individual request before the Lord. 
And then, as God answers your prayer request, or if God has touched your life through discovering the Jewish Jesus, send us your testimony. We want to rejoice with you, and your testimony will encourage others. Submit your prayer request or testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also connect with us on your social media outlets to stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. I'm Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again when Rabbi Schneider helps us discover the meaning of our dreams. That's coming up Friday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.